everyone, welcome back to Gracie Mae's Tarot. So today we're gonna to be predicting what will be blooming for you in the spring season. Now it doesn't matter when you're finding this video, just know that we'll be talking about either the current or the upcoming spring season. So we have three groups to choose from today. We've got pile one with the blue flowers with the little pearls. For pile two, we have the pink flower. And for pile three, we have the single blue flower. All right, so take a moment if you need to pause the video, meditate on the groups. The timestamps are listed below in the description box, just like always. And like I said, we're gonna be looking at what will be growing in your life. Um, so think changes, think um, blessings, good news, all that stuff um, for the spring season. All right, so let's get into your reading. All right, for all my pile ones who chose the blue flowers with the pearls, welcome to your reading. Actually, I think I'm gonna put that over here. All right, so I'm shuffling on camera today, so let me know in the comments down below if you like this style, what your preference is. I do think I'm gonna keep mixing it up, but we'll see. So pile one, what is growing for you? What is blooming for you? in the spring season. What is blooming for pile one in the spring season? And of course, we'll say a big thank you to my guides and your guides for bringing in these messages. Okay, pile one, pile one. Comment down below too, um, your favorite season. Pile one. Ooh, we're off to a good start with the nine of pentacles. I like that. The Emperor, get it, pile one. <laughs> okay, what is blooming, what is growing? 10 of Pentacles, oh my goodness, okay. I think I want one more card for you guys, one more card. I was gonna get three, but let's do one more. Interesting, the Five of Swords, see? Spirit, can we clarify this Five of Swords? <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, okay. And then bottom of the deck, we have Two of Cups. Pile one, major, major blessings for you um, in the spring season. Okay, so I really like this because I feel like you all have been sort of in this slumber like the way she's here, the way she's resting and all curled up with the mice here with the pentacles all around her. Now the nine of pentacles typically talks about, you know, being financially abundant. I mean, you're not at the um, 10 of pentacles yet, but the nine of pentacles is definitely a card of like richness of like being at least financially comfortable. But the way it's coming across within the context of this reading, I feel like for many of you, you've been in this period where, you know, you've been working hard for some time and it's kind of like you've been hitting a wall. Like these two fairies look very similar to me and it almost comes across like this fairy is talking to a younger version of herself. Like this fairy looks very similar to this one. This one just looks a bit younger to me. <laughs> and then we have the queen of pentacles here. So. I feel like you've always worked hard or maybe you have made some, you know, mistakes in your past or things that you look at as mistakes now. Like, man, I wish I hadn't majored in that or I wish I hadn't gone down that certain career path or I wish I wouldn't have stayed stuck at that job for so long. Like, I could have done better. You know, whatever the case may be, whatever it is that you've been sort of struggling with, it kind of feels like for a while there you were really holding yourself in judgment and kind of being a bit critical to that past version of yourself, you know, sort of being overly judgmental and not understanding that at that time you were doing the best that you could with the knowledge and the skills that you had available at that time. Whereas now in the spring, you're stepping into this queen of pentacles ener energy where you've made peace with the past here. There's no longer that internal conflict. And I think the reason for that is, is that you've understood that, you know, you can work really, really hard and still not 
increase your wealth. And that's so hard, right? Because we're all sold that kind of lie, like, or maybe lie is a strong word. <laughs> we're all sold that myth to an extent that if you just work hard enough, you know, that hard work will pay off. And it's not always the case, right? Like there's all these other mitigating factors, you know, you know, people start from a different place of privilege, for example. Um, sometimes it's just bad luck. Sometimes a path just isn't really meant for you. And if, you know, you're a spiritual person, you know, we, ha we have free will, but to an extent, like if a path isn't meant for you, your guides will try to steer you in a direction that is going to allow you to flourish, right? That's going to put you more so in the path of like your soul's purpose, you know, it all kind of just depends on like your soul contract and all that. We won't go down that whole rabbit hole, but I will say, I feel like you've made peace with the past and I feel like you've gone into this sort of slumber where you're like, you know what? I've tried working hard. <laughs> I've tried doing all these, you know, sort of practical real world things and I mean, I'm still kind of at the same place with it. So instead, you've sort of been working on your manifestation and you've been working on balance and you've been working on setting healthy boundaries with like your current workplace and being like, no, I'm not gonna do the work of four people while all these other people get paid the same as I do and they never pull their weight, that kind of thing. You know, like you're not letting people take advantage of you anymore. You're really standing strong in your power and you're just resting and manifesting and dreaming and praying and hoping and it's brought you to this more peaceful state, okay? That peacefulness, I think, is what is bringing in what is allowing this Ten of Pentacles. So there is some growth in your finances coming, but take this as it resonates. For some of you, this increase in financial abundance is through this emperor. So I see this kind of split. I think for many of you, you've always been hardworking. You've always been going after your dreams, very motivated, very ambitious. I think that's what drives that self-criticism because you are so ambitious and hardworking, but it hasn't really paid off. I think for many of you, your hard work is paying off. The fruits of your own labor are coming through with the Queen of Pentacles, but in addition to this, you are also having abundance. For some of you, it's strictly love. For others of you, it's love and money, okay? And when I say love and money, I mean money from someone else, okay? So for all of you, personal finances are increasing. For the second half of this, it's that, because I want to make this very clear. For the second half of this, it's that you're either also getting, you know, more abundance in your love life with the Two of Cups being the bottom deck energy here and the Emperor coming through. I see this Queen of Pentacles and this Emperor as a match. Um, or you're getting that match, but you're also, this person is more financially um, abundant than you. And I say that because this is a court card and this is Major Arcana, okay? And this is the only Major Arcana that we have. So I do think this person is more financially secure than you are presently. And even when you meet this person, I still feel like they are more financially stable than you are. They have more financial abundance. And it's through this relationship that not only are your personal finances increasing because of your own hard work, but also through this union with this person, your financial abundance is growing. So that doesn't mean like, oh, you're gonna get married to them right away and you're gonna move into a big house or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. It's more so like you have this security where if you really needed help, this person would help you out or this person could be treating you to some really nice dates or buying you gifts, that sort of thing. And I will say too, just like I say in all of my readings, you are represented by this queen of pentacles, but that doesn't mean this has to be your gender just because a woman is on the cover of this card, um, or I guess the back of this card, <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um, this is divine feminine energy. This is the divine masculine energy coming through. It's just energy, okay? This is representing you. But again, doesn't have to mean that, you know, you're a woman. Okay, 
always energy, not referring to gender or biological sex. <laughs> I have to always give that disclaimer, but I hope that I made that clear, okay? And hey, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, some people have like their Mars in their eighth house, so like they do benefit from other people's money. Like that's the placement of um, like inheritance or like marrying up, <laughs> so to speak, or um, you know just enjoying the benefit of other people's finances, whatever extent that is, or their wealth or their resources. So. I have that placement, that's why I know it so well, but some of you might have a Mars in the eighth house. And honestly, it's you kind of deserve that because Mars in the eighth house comes with a lot of other stuff because it's Scorpio energy. So it's like, you know, you need that little bit <laughs> to get you through the other stuff that comes with having a Mars in the eighth house. All right, so yeah, I feel like that's all I wanted to say with that, but it's all looking so positive. I mean, love and money, like those are, I think if you look at tarot readings on YouTube, that is like two of the big things that people really, really <laughs> um, look for. And it makes sense. And I think the more you get into your spiritual journey, you start to, um, you know, really crave the, the more spiritual side of things. Okay, so we have creativity and we have serenity. I'm sorry, serenity, and at the bottom of the deck here we have nurture. And that's not to say that you guys aren't farther along in your spiritual journey. I just know that there's a lot of you watching and you're all gonna be at different places. Okay, so I love this for you. How cute are these oracle cards? They're new, but I'm so excited about them. Okay, so we have nurture. Nurturing your inner child supplies you with the innocent joy of living. I love that this mentions your inner child because this calls back to this Five of Swords. I feel like you were kind of beating up, like I said, that younger version of yourself. And I think your inner child was, you know, really damaged by this in a lot of ways. Um, and I do think for some of you too, maybe you have a critical parent. Maybe it's not even you. Maybe it's just a parent that is really judgmental of your progress and makes you feel like you should be further along. Or maybe some of you have an older sibling that you really compare yourself a lot to. Um, but I love that you have nurture here because I think that with this Queen of Pentacles, you're becoming more grounded and you're sort of starting to appreciate these positive qualities that you have, your your work ethic, your ambition. And you're starting to understand that you know, if you're not where you want to be in your career presently, it's not for a lack of trying and you can't beat yourself up for trying, you know? Um, and I would say too, with nurture, I do feel like this calls back again to this two of cups here because it's very balanced, very equal, very giving. And I like that these two fairies here, well, this like mermaid fairy, <laughs> um, I like that there's sort of this balance between water and earth energy just with the colors and her being this mermaid and then the green over here i do think there's a possibility that some of you are um if you're the divine feminine the queen of pentacles here so we've got earth energy with pentacles there's a lot of taurus capricorn and virgo coming through but then this is also reminding me here of water so scorpio cancer and pisces and then earth again so I do feel like there's a beautiful balance that is coming through. Um, the Hermit here is in reverse, so if you've been single, you're definitely at least meeting someone and coming out of that. It doesn't mean you're automatically going to be in a romantic partnership with this person, but I think at least you'll be developing a close friendship that does lead to romance. And for some of you, given that these two look so young. It could be a possibility that this is a person from your past returning. Um, I wouldn't say it was an ex, but more so maybe someone you knew when you were younger. And then, um, yeah, with nurture here, I just think that you're being kinder to yourself. You're taking care of yourself. It kind of gives me the energy of like mothering yourself. And then here we have creativity. Creativity is a natural part of you that can be ignited and developed. Yeah, I do feel like as of right now, there's a lack of fire energy coming through. And so that could be something that is coming in the spring for you is that you are going to get a boost of creativity and that could be related to why you're able to grow your financial situation. Maybe you get inspired um, to follow a different career path, to go back to school. Um, maybe you get inspired to start a passion project and that develops into a business, like starting an Etsy store, starting a YouTube channel, something like that. 
Um, but definitely creativity is coming in. And then also with creativity, I always think of love too, because, you know, to me, love is part of, part of like a creative expression. You know, if you think of passion, if you think of heat, if you think of fire, um, definitely has like romantic connotations, right? I won't go too deep into that. Um, but yes, I think a return of fire energy is really nice because there is a lot of like grounded earthy concerns here, <laughs> concerns, um, energy, and I think also a bit of water. And I think um, the serenity card here reminds me of water too, but there is a lack of fire. So it's nice to see that coming back in. And then it says for serenity, the spirit of serenity brings a calmness to the connectivity of all that is. So I do think for many of you, you are going to feel more connected spiritually. Um, this five of swords is conflict, right? So to get to a place where this conflict is ending, because I do think it's, it's all about your internal peace. And that's the best thing ever, right? <laughs> when we, when we um, come to a, a place of understanding and a place of acceptance of ourselves, that's the most beautiful thing ever. Um, I do feel like with creativity and fire energy coming through, um, hopefully that will also bring a boost of self-confidence for you. Because I think especially once you get to that 10 of pentacles energy, you're going to be feeling very satisfied with yourself. So also very positive. <laughs> and to be clear, like 10 of pentacles doesn't mean you're going to be a millionaire overnight. It's not like that. Um, but it's a place of security and stability and being comfortable, you know, like she doesn't have to worry for anything. She has all that she needs. And the best part about this is that she has enough to share, right? Okay. Let's find out a little bit more information for my pile ones. What is blooming for them in the springtime? Discovery, ooh. The source of magic. Fire element, okay. Like I said, the return of fire. Let's get one more card here. Oh, wow, two. Okay. So fire element, love it. So definitely a return to your creativity. If you feel like your creativity has been blocked, I think for some of you too, maybe you've just been feeling really, really tired and the spring is bringing in some, some energy to you. It's energizing you. Um, you know, it's definitely easy to kind of shut yourself indoors and stay in bed all day and not go out in the winter time. So the return of this fire element, I think is definitely just going to bring um, some fresh energy to you, some reignited motivation. And I think with discovery too, you're really coming into your own. <laughs> like you're, you're really standing in your own power. This is a very grounded, empowered energy. And so to be coming into this, I think you're freeing yourself from the expectation of, well, why am I not this far along in my journey like other people are here i should be here too you're letting go of those should statements and just accepting where you are and that acceptance of where you are and just sort of peacefully being in the present moment and still holding on to your vision of what you want for the future but like patiently waiting for it that is connecting you to the source of magic. That's allowing your guides to help that manifestation process along, help you get to where you want to be, you know? Because the more you sort of push away your present situation, um, the more resistance you're creating, right? So you're letting go of that and coming into your own and understanding your own power in that collaboration process with the universe and your guides, you know, like whatever terminology you want to use is going to help this abundance come in. And then with painting poppies, I just feel like you're having fun again. And there's that creativity again. Um, there's this lightheartedness coming through. And with the chocolate brownie fairy, these two cards in particular make me feel like, again, you're connecting back to that inner child. And I think it's very healing for you. And it could be too that this person, if you did know them when you were younger, they're going to help reignite that in you. You know, they're going to bring out that lighthearted side. You're going to reminisce with them. Um, I think it's going to be a very beautiful energy. 
And then because we did get romance, I will pull some love cards in just a second. Let's get some more information. This is also a new little oracle deck that I picked up. Look at the little teapot. It's just so cute. I don't know, I've been in like this fairy cottage <laughs> like mode where I just want everything to look, or in like woodland animals, <laughs> like that whole thing. I ordered another deck, but it was on pre-order, so it hasn't come yet. I was a little disappointed because I was trying to hold off on this reading, and I was like, no, like spring is starting. I need to get it uploaded, so we'll be using that deck whenever it comes in, but it's, it's sort of like a woodland animal-themed oracle deck, so I'm excited about it. Okay, pile one. Let's get some more information about what is blooming for you in the spring season. What is blooming for you in the spring season? What is blooming for pile one? Okay. This one was the bottom of the deck. Okay. So we've got share. The busy bee should still make time for each flower. Oh, I love that. That is adorable. Um, so remember how we talked about you're still able to share with the Ten of Pentacles, I do feel like, you know, like I said, you're really hardworking, so I do feel like maybe there's a tendency to um, always feel like you have to be working, and it may be too, like when you start to see success in your project or whatever it is that you're going towards, it's gonna vary for all of you because it's a general reading, but when you get that little bit of success, especially if you haven't had that level of success before, you can really want to hold on to it and you feel like you have to work 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 to maintain that level of success and you're motivated and you're energized right with that fire element you want to go 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 especially after such a long period of rest and especially too if new love is coming in i mean that's going to take up a lot of your time and so or even if you're ha even if you're currently in a relationship and it's a fresh start with your current partner um you know, it's very go, 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 right? So it's just a kind of a soft, gentle reminder um, to still tend to other areas of your life. So don't neglect your self-care, don't neglect your close friendships, your family, you know, the people who matter in your life, um, your hobbies, your other interests, whatever it is, still make time for those other things. And then with beauty, dare to be tender and strongly vulnerable. I love that because I feel like that's connected to the love message. Um, it's really coming through that they want you to, really your guides is they, <laughs> um, they really want you to be confident, self-assured in your beauty um, inside and out and sort of letting you know there's beauty in being vulnerable and being open, you know, because we had all of that earth energy and we had a little bit of water, but not quite as much as all of the earth and earth is very grounded and slow moving energy so that's why i said this might start off as a friendship but even if it does and you're more comfortable at moving at a slower pace and you know they're the emperor so they might be pushing things a little bit faster than you are but um it's just encouraging you to in your own time still be emotionally vulnerable you know that is beautiful it's not something to be ashamed of um, maybe you opened up in the past and you were betrayed you were hurt you know this is sort of reassurance that it is safe for you to open up and then we have joy make time for the little things today it's just encouraging you again to have fun which i think you will be with chocolate brownie fairy and painting poppies i do feel like you're going to be more connected to your inner child and you know, just doing things for fun. And then we have listen, be alert, the soft chiming bells call to nearby fairies. Just asking you to, now that you're sort of in that work mode and go, go, go again after that period of rest, it's really asking you to still, you know, be open and listening to your guides because, you know, you're, want, you're gonna want to continue to grow. That's just sort of the nature of desire. Like we get what we want and that's why it doesn't help you to say like, oh, I'll be happy if I just had this. That's not how desire works, right? So you get what you were wanting, even if it was what you were wanting most in this world, you get it. 
and then you have some new desire that comes along like you're always going to be striving and so you're always going to need that guidance um you know from your guides for not only your own personal growth but also for your goals you know your dreams okay let's get some love messages for my pile ones for the spring season love messages for a pile one for the spring season just using the romance angels I didn't know that Doreen Virtue had um, like renounced new age spirit, <laughs> what is it? New age spirituality. I didn't know any of that because I was wondering like, why can't you find these in the stores or online anywhere? Why do you have to buy like a bootleg version? <laughs> oh wow, okay. Okay. Back in the deck, we have make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you are guided to take. Oh, and then trust is on there too, <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have let your friends help you, ask for and accept support from others. We've got wedding, this situation involves marriage, and we have retreat, it's time to disconnect from the world. Okay, so I'm gonna try to address all the love messages that are coming through. So remember in the beginning, we had the Queen of Pentacles representing you and the Emperor representing your, um, you know, this love that is coming in. So for some of you, you're currently in a relationship and this literally means your relationship is advancing to the next stage. There's gonna be an engagement, a wedding, what have you. For many of you though, I'm seeing this as you're currently single or you're not in a committed relationship or you know you're in a situation ship whatever and there's a new person coming in who's really trying um, to get your attention and it's sort of like this person is coming in the emperor and really trying to like woo this person i know these are children <laughs> but and this also like this repeating kind of theme of like children makes me think that you knew this person when you were younger but take what resonates um, and, and they're sort of like not having it or maybe a little bit resistant. Maybe you're too focused on work. Um, but it's just encouraging you to make the effort. And I think that's related to being emotionally vulnerable because we got that message earlier. I think it's just asking you, you know, if you want love, you do have to be willing to open up. Otherwise, this can't go anywhere. We can send you the right person, but if you're not open to it, where will it go? And if you are open to it, this could be a long-term relationship where you do eventually get married to this person. I do think you're going to be having conversations with this person, very deep conversations. You're going to feel like you're in your own little world, and it's just you two by yourselves, no one else is around. Um, you could be in a crowded room, but if you're talking to this person, it's like everyone else melts away. You know, you're not even focused on anyone else or anything around you. Um, you go off on like fun little dates and adventures or um, this disconnecting from the world. It could be that it's a long distance thing and there's a lot of really long phone conversations with let your friends help you. You could be going to your friends for advice about this connection and they could be giving you reassurance like, yeah, they seem really genuine. Um, could be too that, like I said, you know them from the past and you do have mutual, mutual friends in common. Okay. And also too with the emperor, I mean, that is someone also why I said they're going to be pursuing you if you are the queen of pentacles, which I think most of you are. Um, the emperor is like very pragmatic, knows what he wants, um, you know, he goes after what he wants. You know, the emperor is very direct, very truthful, honest, straightforward, blunt. I mean, Aries energy all the way. Um, and that could be also representing that fire element. The fire energy that is entering your life could literally be through this person, this emperor who is coming in. Okay. Let's just end with a self-care message for my pile ones. So self-care message for pile one for the spring season. Self-care message for pile one. Whoa. Ask for help, it doesn't make you weak. And then bottom of the deck, we have write down your goals, dream big, 
Yeah, I think you're already dre dreaming big. So maybe scripting, if you are into manifestation practices, could help um, bring the, in this energy sooner or more quickly during the springtime. And then asking for help, I mean, you have that message repeated quite a few times, even kind of with this um, sharing card with like the busy bee, um, you know, you're very much like go, 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 go in the spring and it's saying it's okay to ask for help when you need to. It's okay to ask for advice. It's okay to be emotionally vulnerable. If you're feeling insecure about this connection in the beginning because the emperor, even if he's pursuing you, can still be a very intimidating figure even for the Queen of Pentacles, and I feel like you're kind of new to that energy still. So um, yeah, definitely ask for help, ask for reassurance if you need it. There's no shame in that. All right, pile one, this was your reading. I won't keep going on and on. <laughs> um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Again, let me know what your favorite season is um, down at the bottom in the comments. And I will see you guys in my next one. Please take care, pile one. All right, all my pile twos who chose the pink flower, welcome to your reading. So I am shuffling on camera today, so let me know in the comments down below if you like this style. I've been enjoying it, um, so I think I am going to keep up with it, but definitely appreciate your feedback. So pile two, we'll take this moment to thank my guides and your guides for all the messages that we're about to receive. Pile two, what is blooming for pile two in the spring? What is growing in Pile 2's life in the spring? Pile 2. Pile 2. Ooh, the lovers. Okay. Man, you and Pile 1 are starting off very positively. I'm loving this. Queen of Wands, shut up. Okay. <laughs> pile 2, let's get into it. Okay, Nine of Swords, the Moon. And the priest. Okay. And then we have Ace of Swords as the bottom of the deck here. Very interesting here. Okay. I actually, let's just, I want to keep this as our bottom of the deck because I do like that. I just want to actually feeling called I clarified pile ones with the same deck but for you all I'm feeling like I need to use my little unicorn deck because I want to clarify this nine of swords oops okay Clarify Nine of Swords for Pile 2. Can we clarify the Nine of Swords for Pile 2? Page of Pentacles. Oh, Queen of Wands. Interesting. Okay. And then bottom of the deck, Three of Cups. Okay. This is making sense. <laughs> I feel like coming into the spring season, you've been in this Nine of Swords and Moon energy. I feel like there's been a lot of things that are uncertain in your life that have been causing you to have like nightmares or like really weird dreams. Um, I feel like psychically with the priest card and the moon being here, oh whoops, <laughs> um, you've been a bit, I feel like you've kind of been getting like new spiritual gifts coming in or like your spirit guide, your spirit guides have been giving you like a lot of synchronicities maybe you've been seeing a lot of like angel numbers or you've been having like really clear signs that I feel like are very very obvious but it's almost like even though they're like neon signs flashing in your face um you still don't trust it like you still don't trust your own intuition and you still feel confused and conflicted and like, can I trust this? And your guides are saying, yes, send her five more signs or him, whatever. Um, and it's still like you, for whatever reason, you're just being blocked from this. And it's almost like you don't trust the messages that are coming through because it seems like it's too good to be true. And I feel like you're someone who has struggled so much in their past. I mean, if you look at this nine of swords here, 
Nine of Swords is the card of insomnia, of anxiety, but also with the way she's wrapped up in these thorns and she almost looks kind of a mixture of fear and relief on her face at this bird and this flower, like this white flower, it's almost like this bird is bringing in this peace offering, bringing in an end to this conflict, bringing in peace and purity and innocence, like a return, sort of like a reset button to like optimism and like um, that sort of like childhood naive kind of nature that we all sort of lose. It's sort of trying to bring in softness and femininity and gentleness and nurturing. And it's almost like she's so relieved, but she's also scared to welcome this back in because she's almost gotten used to this. You know, it's almost like your, your sadness or your misery or your anxiety has become so almost comfortable to you because it's all that you've known for so long. And the idea of welcoming in good things again is a bit scary because that presents the risk for loss again. And you're so afraid of going through that pain again, like a, like a fresh, you're, you're scared of fresh wounds because you've already been hurt for, you know, so much that it's like, well, I'm comfortable with these wounds. Like the idea of opening myself up to new ones, you know, it's not, it, sometimes it feels like it's not worth the risk. It's like, this is what I've been praying for, but now that it's here, it's like, I don't trust it. I'm afraid I'll lose it even if I do get it, which I don't know that I will because I'm not trusting in the signs and it's just creating so much confusion. And with the moon, like the moon really asks us to trust in our intuition and sort of just be guided by just the light of the moon. Like we can't see everything in the dark, but if we follow this light of the moon, which here it's her hair, right? Um, she's connected with this moon because the moon is just a symbol of her own intuition. You know, this wolf, this lone wolf, like if you can follow the inner call of your own wolf, if you can follow this animal instinct, um, you will be okay, you will be safe, your guides will see you through, but it's like you're not trusting it. And this Nine of Swords is preventing you from stepping into this Queen of Wands energy. You know, and fortunately, with the Ace of Swords here, you're coming out of it, right? You, you've been in this sort of Hanged Fae perspective. You're right, this, the Hanged Fae is the moment right before death, right? Right before transformation. You know, we get a fresh perspective, you know, when you're waiting to die, your life is flashing before your eyes, you know, you've got this new perspective, literally everything is turned upside down and you see everything clearly. With the Ace of Swords, that clarity is coming through, the full new beginning, Ace of Cups. I mean, we could keep going, right? There's new energy coming through and it's from that, um, from that Ace of Swords, from that moment of clarity, finally, these other eight swords that are confusing you are going away and you can be in that single moment of clarity and step into this queen of wands energy because you've got her twice right um so this is leo sagittarius aries energy this divine feminine here and then with the page of pentacles i do feel like a lot of you have struggled financially um and that has caused you'd have some at least instability in like your material wealth. Um, it's caused some kind of blows, I think, to your self-confidence. You know, the Queen of Wands is like creativity itself, you know. Um, you know, she to me is very close to Empress energy. Like she's like, a, she's a court card. So she to me, she's like a step below stepping into that Empress energy, major arcana energy. So it's like you're on your way to the Empress energy, which is you know, like endless creativity because it's like birth and creation itself. Um, and so with the Queen of Wands here, you're going to be connecting to that creativity and understanding that you can create wealth for yourself. You can create material stability for yourself. You won't have to be plagued by this anxiety and this instability. And I think for a lot of you too, Love is also wrapped up in this. You know, you may have been drawn to pile one as well because pile one was also closely talking about 
finances and love and that's coming through again this is soulmate energy here with the lovers and then we have the priest card here so i do think of marriage with these two cards especially being right next to one another so you could be coming into divine like union um, with your soulmate if that's something that you're interested in or maybe you're in a current relationship now and this is going to be like elevating um you know like getting a step further in that commitment let's get some oracle cards and see if we can find out some more information about what's going on for you in the springtime there's definitely an ending to this and you stepping into that queen of wands you know that confident self-assured um you know energy meditation aura Pile two, pile two, <laughs> wellness. And then bottom of the deck, sanctuary. Okay, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Sorry, I just want to fix these. Let's start with meditation. Meditation will transport you to a place of bliss at any desired time of the day. This is what is going to be the key. For you getting out of that nine of swords energy for you to get out of this because i think for some of you it's gotten to a point to where this anxiety and this stress has bled into your daily life and listen i feel like you have definitely gone through the process of healing i don't feel like you're someone who has sat around and not made any effort <laughs> towards healing I do feel like you've been on this path for a while but it's almost like you've been working on healing for so long that when you get to a place of stability it's almost like like well I've done the healing where's my abundance like where, where is the change like I've been healing I've been healing I've been healing why haven't my external circumstances reflected this great internal change? And then that sort of like restarts the anxiety because you're like, well, I've been optimistic. I've been doing all this work, like <laughs> in terms of like healing and shadow work. Where's the change? Like, why am I still dealing in this same stagnant energy, this hanged fey energy? Where is my fool? Where is my new start? Like, I've been doing my best to stay optimistic, but this is getting old. Like, I feel like that's your energy. It's very, it's cute because it's relatable. Um, and your guys are saying, listen, meditate. Um, if you just meditate, hold on to your vision. Because I think for a lot of you, you're trying to manifest with sanctuary. I'll get to this in a second. But you're trying to manifest a better living situation or a better social environment for yourself and you're also trying to manifest love you know um we'll see when i pull the the romance angels cards but i think for a lot of you you're single or you're maybe deeply unhappy in a current partnership but maybe you live with that person and you can't financially afford to leave on your own gracie i'm sorry my cat is like we have all these windows open in the house and she wants to try to open this one. Stop it. No, 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 no. No. Stop. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, um, yes, meditation will be the key to this. And I know meditation is hard. It definitely takes practice, especially if you've been in the Nine of Swords energy, but it will help bring in this um, new love connection. It will help you connect to those things that you're trying to manifest um i'll go ahead and talk about sanctuary it says with a calm focused mind and enjoyment of each moment you create your very own sanctuary so i do feel like many of you want to move to a better situation either you want to change your social environment you want new friendships or you know you're not happy with like your co-workers and so you're wanting a new social environment um, for others of you, you don't like your living situation and you want to move or you just don't like the location of where you live and you want to move, um, but you want a home of your own and preferably a home to share with your soulmate or your future partner, future spouse, whatever terminology you want to use. I do feel like for many of you, that's what you're trying to manifest. 
and it's saying meditation will help bring this in during the springtime and will help you step into this queen of wands energy now we have wellness a healthy body mind and spirit thrive with a constant flow of balanced energy so i feel like it's connecting really well with these cards you know you may not immediately be able to change your current situation but you will during the springtime get clarity on how to begin that process and i do think for many of you that soulmate is coming in and they will be part of this transition of this new chapter of this move for you and i feel like this is saying in the meantime you don't have to be miserable you can create sanctuary within your own mind even if your external circumstances are not ideal you can still find peace and happiness now why postpone your happiness you know just make peace with where you're at and just know that where you are at presently is not your forever circumstance and spring is bringing in love spring is bringing in clarity um i don't think necessarily that you will be moving in the springtime but i do feel like you'll see a pathway out that you did not see before and then we have aura it says a healthy aura keeps your energy in balance and harmony yeah i do feel like that's why i said split some of you want a physical move and others of you want to change in your social environment because the people around you are really depleting your energy and for some of you it's both <laughs> like it's both um so that there is a change in that but it's also asking you to actively do things that will protect your energy you know like if you're taking care of yourself if you're participating in this wellness for physical you know and emotional health for meditation you're focusing on your spiritual health you know that will help protect your aura that will create a sense of inner peace and sanctuary no matter where you're at or who you're around okay pile two i am loving your reading and i hope that you are too definitely definitely feeling for you guys all right, pile two, pedestal, devotion, birth of magic. These cards have been coming out quite a bit in my readings and it's crazy because it's like I shuffle and I shuffle, but I feel like it's just part of the collective energy of, you know, my like current subscribers. Okay, dandelions and let's get one more. Oh, wow. <laughs> wishing you help okay yeah they're really stressing this message here of your health and with all of the green i do feel like this is really talking about your physical health now i'm not going to tell you how to get healthy um that is definitely a very like personal personal journey and you know decision and we all need different things so whatever way that you feel like you can improve your health you know some of you are going to need to like I think for a lot of you, this is talking about physical wellness, um, but we've also already gotten messages too about mental and emotional and spiritual wellness as well. So I definitely think comprehensively, whatever you can do to improve your health, and I do feel like with all the green getting out into nature could also be beneficial, um, but yeah, whatever you can do to improve your health, it will definitely help you through this sort of um, chapter ending in your life because I do feel like a lot of change is coming and spring is representing the birth of these changes but it's still in the in that growing phase so I think as you go through the year these changes are going to start picking up speed and you're going to go through major transformations as you end this old cycle and fully step into the new but I feel like spring is representing the start so the springtime could represent when you meet the soulmate, like that would be the start, that would be the initiator, right? And then with devotion and pedestal, yeah, for a lot of you, like I said, I do feel like you're meeting someone new or at least you're getting a fresh start in your current um, romantic situation if you're happy in your current romantic situation. You know, it's a general reading, so it's gonna vary a lot. But I am getting the vibe that most of you are either in an unhappy situation ship, you know, um, or you're single. And so this is representing a soulmate who's going to come in and they're really going to put you on a pedestal. Um, this to me is signaling they see you in that divine feminine energy. 
they see you as a bit mysterious, like you're slowly opening up to them. This is a very like sexual energy, obviously. They're gonna be very physically attracted to you, but they're also gonna be drawn in. Um, and this is very magnetic and devotion here. Like they're looking up to you. They're wanting to get to know you. They're wanting to please you. Um, you know, they're really trying to, how do I put this? <laughs> um, they're really trying to get into your aura. <laughs> they're trying to um, understand you and get to know you on every level. <laughs> um, they really are though, like taking the time to peel back these layers one by one because I do feel like you all are coming across as like the queen of swords because we had so much swords energy. And again, when I say queen of swords, that's just talking about energy, it's not talking about gender. Um, but with the Queen of Swords, I do feel like you all are very guarded. You've been hurt a lot in the past. And so this person is going to have to work kind of extra hard to get to know you and to get um, to get to that next level with you and to get beyond like friendship or even maybe forming a friendship with you might be hard because it may take a while for you to notice them um, when your soulmate does come in just because you are so guarded and kind of closed off emotionally. And that's why working on your wellness would help you open up that heart chakra. All this green is making me think of the heart chakra. And then with dandelions, this is making me think of growth of planting seeds and so I feel like it's sort of like you've been in the muck you know you've been in the the rough of it I do think a lot of you have been engaging in shadow work and healing and you know kind of dealing with what's the dark and what's unseen and really you know the nighttime your mind has been very active like your subconscious is in processing all of this deep healing of like trauma and past wounds and hurt and disappointments and it's making you a bit tired um, you know, like your sleep, like you're actively like healing and regenerating in your sleep. And it's just, it's heavy. It's a lot. And so it's like, don't worry though. Like you're, you're going through all of these weeds. You're going through all of this hard work, but you've been planting seeds for a garden that's actually going to grow things that you want to grow. And so, um, yeah, very, very positive though for you. Um, Lord, pile two, sorry. I blinked for a second. I was like, what pile am I on? I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get some romance angel cards for my pile twos. Pile two. Yeah, I do feel like this is very, um, very relatable energy. I would be surprised if a lot of people don't end up I, would, I feel like a lot of people might end up picking this group because, you know, I feel like even if this doesn't end up being a popular group, I feel like people have, a lot of people would relate to this is what I'm trying to say in the most convoluted way possible. <laughs> As like reassurance that, you know, you're not alone in this. Oh my gosh, pile one got this too. Yeah, like I said, there's like definitely some parallels between pile one and pile two, if you were drawn to both. Pile two's love life. Okay, yeah, definitely some of you were drawn to pile one. Yep, okay. Yep, this card came out in pile one as well. I shuffle these cards a lot before I started this reading, so yeah, a lot of you may have been drawn to pile one as well. Um, but with this wedding card, some of you may be having a fresh start in your relationship. Maybe there's an engagement happening. Um, you know, maybe you've been waiting on that and thinking it wasn't going to happen and bam, a proposal happens in the springtime or you're actually getting married in the spring. But like I said, for most of you, I think you're either single or currently unhappy in a partnership that you can't leave for whatever reason, um, you know, or in a situationship, whatever the case may be. But I do feel like you're coming into union with your soulmate. That doesn't mean you're getting married <laughs> in the springtime, um, but you are at least meeting someone that you're going to have a long-term relationship with. I just feel like, like pile one, this is likely to start off as a friendship and it's going to be slow moving. And with this stay optimistic about your love life like don't lose hope you've been in that nine of swords energy for a while now don't lose hope you are coming out of that 
and then flirt. I think there's going to be um, some very fun energy coming in. And with let your friends help you, um, it could be that you're meeting this person through mutual friends or you knew them in the past. Maybe they you knew them from school or something. Um, also with let your friends help you, you could just be asking your friends for a lot of advice and reassurance because if you've been hurt in the past before, you may wanna ask your friends like, what do you think of this person? Like, should I trust them? That kind of thing. With retreat at the bottom of the deck, I think you're gonna be having a lot of heart to heart conversations with this person. Um, oh, look at that, true love. <laughs> love that. Um, that just caught my eye, but Yes, I think you're going to be going on a lot of, you know, like little dates together that are like adventurous where you're, you know, maybe you're out in nature, you're separated from the rest of the world, or maybe you are like in a crowded restaurant, but the conversation with this person, you just feel such a strong connection with them that they do get you to open up and, um, you know, it feels like you and that person are the only two people in the room, even if you, like I said, you're in a crowded restaurant. Gracie May, girl. I'm sorry, my cat. Okay, I almost forgot to do these little oracle cards. I was showing pile one. Look at the cute little teapot. These are so cute. It's a new deck that I got. I like the little cottage. Actually, I think they're called Secret Garden. But anyway, all right, so pile two, pile two. What will bloom in the spring for pile two? <laughs> Literally growth. <laughs> That's so cute. You know what's growing in the springtime? You are. <laughs> that is adorable. Okay, one more. Radiance. Okay, I lied. <laughs> we'll get another. We'll get the bottom of the deck one. Okay. Yes. Growth. All flowers must grow through dirt. That's what I was saying. It's like, even though you feel so alone right now, everyone has gone through this to some extent at some point in their life. And if they haven't yet, they will. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know what her obsession is with this one window. Cats are like that. It's the, if this window was open, she would have no interest in it. Gracie. All right, I'm sorry guys, hold on a second. She's really trying to cause like chaos and destruction <laughs> just to get me to stop doing this. Okay, so yes, you are what, everyone can relate to this, you know? So even though you feel very alone right now, just know that this is, you know, everyone goes through hurt and pain and that's not to minimize your hurt and your pain, um, but it's just to let you know that you're not alone in this and you will see it through even if it feels very dark and you feel very lost at times. Okay, so rest, slow down. You don't have to solve everything today. I think your mind, your mind will not leave you alone. It's like you can't escape your own mind and that's why that meditation and wellness is so important for you. And then we have radiance, keep your head held high and follow the sun, optimism stay optimistic you know don't lose your hope don't lose your faith don't let these struggles that you've been through make you lose that inner source of light disconnect you from because you do have this big inner light and i feel like people have taken advantage of your light you know i feel like a lot of you probably are leo sagittarius or aries or those are major placements in your chart um you do have that fire in you. And I feel like people have taken advantage of that. And, you know, they sort of tried to steal that light for themselves. But that that femininity, that softness, that creativity, that nurturing, that um, fiery wands, energy, that inner light that never goes out, you still have access to it. You just, I think, have been in that air energy where your mind just won't let you rest. Okay, and then we have wallflower. Look for the crack in the concrete and find your way out. You all are not wallflowers. Like, you're not meant to be. And I feel like you've been feeling a bit stuck. And maybe you have been feeling like 
no one is noticing you or you feel like a paler version of yourself. Maybe you, you don't recognize who you are at this point, but you are coming out of that energy. You are finding a way out. And I feel like also this crack in the concrete to me is a bit like this ace of swords, like that clarity is coming in, growth is coming in. You know, it may not feel like it because you're buried under all of this concrete, but there is a way out. It is there. You know, you just have to find it. You have to find a way to grow. Even in your current circumstances, you have to find a way to bloom, even in your current circumstances. Because like I said, it's either, you know, socially with your connections or it's your physical circumstances, like your house, your location, or both, all of those things that you're not happy with and that you feel like are inhibiting your growth. And then we have present, journey into the garden to escape two eternities, the past and the future. Connect to the present moment. You know, that's where your power lays. You don't have any control or any power over the future or the past. You know, the future is always evolving. And even if you're manifesting, even if you're praying, you still have to surrender, right? Because you don't have control. You can set those intentions, but at the end of the day, you still have to have faith and trust that your guides, that the universe is going to work it out for you. You know, like the present moment. <laughs> That's where you find your true empowerment. That's where you find your true connection to self. Okay. And that will bring you, I think, a lot of peace. Okay, we're just getting some self-care messages pile to to end. Okay, and I'm going to cover this up because I don't want to get flagged for anything. But this is literally meditation. <laughs> so I like that this came out for you. Um, this is meditation and we have the chakras here aligned. So that makes me think again of wellness. And then we had gratitude rampage list 10 things that you're thankful for. So again, like even though you don't like or feel comfortable or like you can flourish in your present circumstances, that doesn't mean that you can't look around and find something to be grateful for, even if it's just yourself, okay? And I'm sorry, someone is like blasting music outside. Um, bottom of the deck, we have look for the signs and synchronicities. So I do feel like your guides are trying to connect to you to bring you this reassurance. I just think that your mind is so active that their messages are not getting through. Or like I said, it's right in your face and you're just not seeing it because you're so disconnected from your intuition and your inner peace. Your mind is just flooded with anxiety, um, or stress, worry, whatever, intrusive thoughts. Um, and that is preventing you from connecting with your guides. So definitely meditation would be super helpful for you. And yeah, I feel like that was all of the messages. I had something else I wanted to say, but hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe that was it. Okay, <laughs> um, pile two. If I think of it, I think of something else, I'll put it down in the comments, but um, yeah. Pile 2, this was your reading. I hope that it resonated. Um, I really enjoyed this reading a lot. I hope that you did too. Um, please comment down below if um, you like the shuffling on camera. And also let me know what your favorite season is. And I think that's it. Um, like I said, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. I appreciate all the support and encouragement that I've been getting. It's been really exciting to see my channel grow. And I will see you guys in my next one. Please take care of pile two. All right, all my pile threes, welcome to your reading. So we're gonna be shuffling on camera today. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this sort of style of reading. And also let me know what your favorite season is. I've been asking every group, I'm curious to know. Go ahead and take this time to thank my guides and your guides for the messages that we're about to receive. So let's find out pile three, what is growing for you in the springtime? What is blooming in pile three's life this spring? All right, all my pile threes, pile three. Pile three. Okay, we got the Knight of Wands. Excellent card to start off with. 
We have the Ace of Cups and the Fool. Let's get whoop, Strength. Let's see, bottom of the deck here, we have the Six of Wands. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Where to start? Okay. I'm going to say okay a million times because this is very exciting energy. Every single group has had some message about a fresh new start. And that makes me so happy because it's so perfect for spring and it's very in alignment with sort of my intention for this reading because I really do feel like our lives mirror the seasons in a lot of ways, or at least I know my life does. Um, and I've seen that in, you know, as like close friends and family too. But so we have the Fool here, we have the Ace of Cups. This is a new start. This is fresh energy. This is optimism, beginning a new chapter. With the first two groups, it's like that they, many of them were on the brink of a new start. You are sort of like flying into spring with the fresh start, the new start. Like I would be very shocked if you were not in this energy at the start of spring, okay? And I do feel like it's because you're embodying this Knight of Wands energy. You are coming through like head first, going after what you want. You have this optimism, this, um, you know, I'm just going to take a risk. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to go for it straight on forward. This is a very action oriented card and it's very fast moving. Just look at that face. <laughs> like that is a face of sheer determination combined with strength. I mean, this is resilience. This is, I believe in myself. I'm confident. I'm standing in my own power. There's just this inner knowing that you can trust yourself to do whatever it is that you want to do. You're going to go after it. And even if you don't succeed the first time, you're going to keep trying because you have this endless strength that you can draw upon. And with the Knight of Wands here and strength representing Leo, this is a lot of fire energy. This is Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo energy coming through strong. Really double Leo here. Um, you know, even if those aren't like your sun placements, those are dominant placements in your chart. Gracie, no. I'm sorry, my cat has been obsessed with this one window and she won't stop. Um, it's just because it's closed. <laughs> That's all it is. If it was open, she wouldn't care. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, but you are going to have victory with the Six of Wands. So whatever it is that you're working on, it's going to vary for a lot of you. Um, with the Ace of Cups, for some of you, this could be representing like you're trying to manifest new love into your life or you're trying to manifest a higher level of commitment from like your current partner. Or some of you are just increasing in self-love. And that self-love is connecting you with your inner strength and giving you that confidence to go after what you want. But I did want to mention love because we have the Fool and the Ace of Cups here. A lot of times that, re that represents um, really trusting the universe and just taking a chance and going after a new start in love and being open to love. And it represents typically a new partner coming in. But take that if it resonates. For others of you, this is just talking about um, a creative passion or hobby or project that you've been going after or something career or academic related. You know, just take what resonates and we'll see, you know, like what, or this could be even like a personal goal. Like maybe you want to run a marathon or something like that. But we'll find out more as we go through the oracle cards. But I do think it's funny. I think with every group, there's been this balance between um, like love messages, career, financial messages, and like personal empowerment, creativity messages. You know, that has been represented across all three groups, which honestly makes me very, very happy. <laughs> all right, pile three. Ooh, cleansing. Pile three, springtime vitality. 
And we've got motivation and strength again. You got strength twice. And the bottom of the deck, we have inspiration. Okay. How cute are these cards? I've been so excited to use them. I actually want to start with vitality and strength. So it says vitality is the beaming force that gives energy and vigor to life. And then you have strength. Inner strength is the power within that pushes action into all areas of life. And then we also have motivation. Motivation kindles the passion and energy needed in working towards your goals. Yes, you are very action oriented in the spring. You are connected with your inner strength. You are recognizing what your strengths are and you are utilizing those to their fullest extent. You are stepping into this beautiful balance, I think, between the divine feminine and the divine masculine energy. You are really being an equal balance of both because that divine femininity is coming through with creativity and, you know, like that inner strength. But then the divine masculine is coming through and helping you put that creativity into like actionable steps towards your goals. So you're balancing like creativity and imagination with practicality. And there's just this motivation and this vitality. You're really using your inner light um, because you know that that's that inner strength is abundant. It's an endless supply. You're never going to deplete it. Your creativity is endless and vitality. I mean, you're just shining so bright. I think that could be why you're bringing new love into your life too, because you're so focused on yourself and your goals. You're very goal oriented and very focused on yourself, but it's that sort of like inner focus and that recognition of your own strengths that you're shining that outward and you're an inspiration to others and other people are drawn to that because you're just radiant during this time you're very radiant you're radiating light and then we have cleansing and inspiration like i said you're an inspiration to others an inspired mind is willing to reach beyond limitations yeah you're definitely stepping into a very confident energy. You're not going to be dissuaded from your goals. You're going to go after them fearlessly with the full card. Um, yeah, you're not going to be held back by limiting beliefs or naysayers, people who are trying to put you down, whatever the case may be, your own insecurities. No, like you are just going after whatever this is that you've been wanting to do. You're going at it full force. And then cleansing, energy and cleansing creates a healthy and harmonious space in which to thrive. I think you're really being protective of your energy too. Because you're so hard at work, you're so busy on your personal goals, you have zero time and zero willingness to engage with anyone who is going to be an energy vampire and try to steal you know, some of this vitality from you. You're not going to do that. You know, sometimes... Even people with good intentions can like really put a damper on our creativity and our self-confidence by being like, well, you know, is that practical or what's your backup plan if that fails? Like they just assume failure, you know, where they just have a very limited um, mindset, you know, um, that sort of thing. Or, you know, people are actually envious and jealous and, you know, don't want you to see your own worth and there is malicious intent. So, just take whatever resonates and I think really just be discerning about who you're surrounding yourself with in the spring because sometimes when you shine this bright, you do attract people who, you know, um, <laughs> don't have that light for themselves and so they have to seek it out from others and they end up draining other people of their light. So, yeah, pile three. <laughs> Okay, this is interesting. Bottom of the deck, we have Bubble Rider. Very interesting. Okay. Rescued. I think in the past, maybe for some of you, you've been overly reliant on other people. And maybe you had some codependency that you had to work through. And now you're stepping into your power. And people don't like that. People are not used to that. And they keep trying to put you back in this energy and you're refusing to go back and that is creating some conflict. You know, people are not used to you being this confident, used to you standing in your power like this and they want to put you back in this old box, this old label and you're not 
you're not someone who needs rescuing anymore. You're going after it on your own and people don't know how to take this. They don't know how to react to it. I also feel like because you're standing in your own power now, because you understand how good this feels, you may try to help other people in your life who are still struggling, but the message here is that they have to learn to do this for themselves, just like you had to learn to do it for yourself. And you may be trying to waste your time saving someone who doesn't want to be saved, they're not yet there yet, and you may be preventing them from learning the karmic lessons that they need to learn. And so let them clear that karmic energy on their own. Let them learn that lesson. You know, um, you, you can't save them. If you save them from this cycle, another cycle is going to start because they have to clear this energy for themselves, just like you had to clear yours. Um, yeah, and I do feel like with trouble, um, because you're standing in your own power, I think you're going to be a lot more vocal than you used to be. And listen, sometimes internal peace... <laughs> comes at the expense of um, external conflict. Like sometimes you end up with more external conflict so that you can have inner peace. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to speak up but you bit your tongue for the sake of appeasing that other person for the sake of not having conflict with them but then for weeks or days or hours, however long, maybe years, <laughs> you regretted not speaking up in that moment and you get mad at yourself for not speaking up and you get mad at yourself for not standing up for yourself or standing up for someone else and you regret it and that creates internal conflict the message here is that internal conflict should never be sacrificed for external peace okay like you cannot sacrifice internal peace for any for external peace like you can't do it it's not worth it you have to have your inner peace nothing is worth sacrificing your inner peace <clears throat> I may have flipped that around when I was talking but you know what I'm saying okay and some people are going to label you um, some people are gonna criticize you some people are not gonna like this new version of you and that's okay but you have to question why does someone else have such a problem with me being confident why is this person so bothered that i am empowered why is this person so bothered that i'm standing up and advocating for myself and my values and for other people that i love why are they bothered by that right like is that even someone that i want in my life not everyone is going to like you and that's okay you are not for everyone and if you're a friend to everyone likely you're a friend to no one right like there's just this sense of loyalty i think to you and this strong sense of values and like what you believe in and what you stand for and you're like that social justice advocate like you just speak up now and i think before you used to bite your tongue so much because you wanted harmony among everybody but harmony among everybody doesn't mean anything if people are being hurt mistreated um people's boundaries are not being respected um you know, people are saying things that are harmful to communities of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not okay. And it's not okay for you to feel like you can't stand up for your values and your morals and like what you believe in. And you know what I mean? Like, you have to be able to speak your truth. Just like everyone has that right to, you know, advocate for themselves. Everyone should feel empowered within themselves, you know? No one should be criticized just for, you know, speaking their mind and standing up for themselves you know like unless you're hurting someone else unless you're being prejudiced towards someone else there's no harm in you standing up for yourself you know okay and then with bubble rider this is really beautiful energy these three cards really went together and that's why i kept this one separate because this is you being completely unbothered i think at first this may like put you in a funk if you let it but I feel like most of you are gonna come out of this very quickly if you even get caught up in it at all. Um, you're just gonna be going with the flow, um, going with what feels good and what feels right to you. And you're not gonna be bothered by all this because you got stuff to do. <laughs> like You were very goal oriented in the spring. Like you don't have the time to be bothered by this. Like you are on your goals. <laughs> like. You are about me, myself, and I, and I love it. Like, I just love it. This is beautiful energy. 
And I think also this is a reminder too to have some fun and don't be all work, 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 work. You know, still keep some balance. What is growing for pile three in the springtime? What did I just say? Play. Yeah, the they, spirit was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is what we meant. <laughs> okay. That is so cute that that came out just as I was saying that. That's kind of what I like about um, shuffling on camera now is that you guys get to see those little moments in real time. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, it says play. Among the grass and wild violets lie undisturbed little secrets to uncover. I feel like this is also saying that the more you balance work and play and you give your mind time to roam and be free and have fun, the more you're going to learn about yourself. And there's such power in knowing yourself and knowing what your strengths are. You're already in that energy. This is saying if you balance work and play, you can expand that further and your creativity can grow further and you can be even more connected with your vitality and your strength and your creativity and that queen of wands energy because um, you got strength again. Um, you're gonna understand all these hidden depths, all these complexities of yourself and the more and on a deeper level that you get to know yourself, the more that you will be in this empowered state. Okay, like it's just your your ability to grow and engage in the self-development is just endless in the springtime. Like you're just flourishing. It's so beautiful and I'm so excited for you. Um, and then we have twilight. Surrender to the last hour when the light barely, when the light barely touches the flowers. I feel like kind of going towards um, either it's, for some of you it's gonna be the beginning of spring for others of you, it's going to be the end of spring. But I feel like if you can surrender to the length of this season and understand that spring is just a season, you know, and you're having this tremendous amount of growth in the spring and understanding that just as this cycle is so happy and abundant for you, there will be a time when winter comes again. But all of the growth that you're doing in the springtime, all of the uh, like inner work and abundance and like just all of this like real world action that you're taking towards your goals and your dreams, it's paying off and it's growing so much in the springtime that it's almost like when winter does come again, you're not even bothered by it because you've done so much growing in the spring that you now feel like you can weather every season. You feel like you're up to the challenge of every season. You understand like letting go in the fall. You understand the hibernation of winter. You understand the, the birth and the growth of spring and the play and the fun and the summer. Like you get it, you know, you really get it. And um, I think that comes again from all of this internal work that you're doing, but also this connection to your inner strength, your resilience, your optimism, um, really that sunshine Leo energy um, is so wonderful and positive. All right, let's get some love messages for my pile threes in the springtime. Love messages for pile three in the springtime. <laughs> we'll get one more. I'm sorry, it's just funny. <laughs> okay for most of you like I said in the spring you are so focused on your career that it's really a non-factor in your life for some of you it's just it's not even coming up not even coming up at all you know I'm not gonna lie to you for others of you and just take whatever message resonates um, for others of you could be that you are meeting a partner through work and through finances. Um, for others of you, you're going to be, um, for some of you, maybe you'll be reconnecting with someone that you knew when you were young. I don't know why that message keeps coming up so much, but it does. Um, but I also feel like this is a message for those of you who are like, no, I'm not resonating with any love messages for the spring. This is just saying connect to your inner child and find that time for fun and play because that's going to help balance out all of this like 
work, 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 work energy that's coming through. And I think for some of you, I see maybe a friendship developing in the springtime, some lighthearted, fun, playful, flirty energy with someone who makes you feel like a kid again. And they are the person that you're spending your time with when you're not working and going after your goals and your dreams. That is what I'm seeing. Um, for those of you already in a relationship, um, I feel like there's a focus on finances and career and maybe you're struggling to balance that. If you do have children, you're struggling to balance this career growth or this like creative passion project or new business, whatever it is with taking care of your children. And it's just reminding you to still dedicate time to that and find balance between the two um, because your children are actually gonna be really healing for you and help you um, remember to find play, time for play and time for um, time to let that creativity just exist without, you know, making it into something that has to be done for profit you know like there nothing wrong with that but there needs to be a balance right like you still need time for free creative expression not like controlled creative expression if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah you're not getting as strong as a love reading as pile one and pile two pile one and pile two are very connected um you are like your own group yeah, you're like your own group. You may possibly, possibly have resonated with pile two, but I'm, I do feel like you're kind of standing on your own in a lot of ways. Okay, I just wanna end with a self-care message. And like I said, for those of you who came to this reading and you were really hoping that I would tell you like you're gonna meet your soulmate in the spring or something like that. I'm not saying that that's not gonna happen. I'm just saying that that doesn't seem to be the area of your focus in the spring. And given that you are growing exponentially within yourself, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, after the springtime, maybe in the summer or the fall, love does come in for you because you have done all of this inner work and you're your light is really attractive um, to other people. Okay, so let's just end with self-care message. I actually want to turn this around um, for pile three. Self-care message for pile three to end. Oh my gosh, these two cards keep coming out a lot too. Um, create your own happiness. You are definitely doing that like i said you were just in that divine masculine energy balance with the divine feminine it's like nothing can stop you you are in perfect harmony in your own power like going after it and i love it and i think um nourish your body with high vibe energy you know take care of yourself it's easy to like eat um eat crap food or like binge on reality tv like i love real housewives so no judgment um but stuff like that when you're working so hard and you do finally like take a minute you know you can make some like less than healthy <laughs> um decisions so that's a good reminder let's just get one more for you guys whoa 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 did eat all those <laughs> just one more ah commit to self-care rituals yeah just just do some self-care during this time. Like, I know you're very focused on your work and your creative project. Sorry guys, my camera died like just as I was doing the outro, but I was gonna say, um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Again, let me know in the comments down below if you like the shuffling on camera and also which pile you picked and what your favorite season is. And uh, yeah, I am so appreciative of all the support that I've gotten. It's been amazing to see my channel grow. And I'm so thankful to all the encouragement, um, you know, and kind words that I've received. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Please take care of Pile 3.